Want to see one of the country's largest worm farms? Well, this week I got to visit my own supplier of worm castings, and we're going to show you how they make 1,300 tons of worm castings every year. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. So I had the pleasure of finally visiting the facility that supplies all the worm castings we sell here at the Urban Worm Company, whether it's two pounds or 40,000. Now you may be wondering, why wouldn't the Urban Worm Company sell its own worm castings? That's a good question, and for a while we did. We pre-composted spent brewer's grains and wood chips in our aerated static bin system before feeding them to our worms in our Michigan Soil Work CFT. Now I'm thankful for that experience as it gave me the knowledge to help Dan Lenowski of Michigan Soil Work start selling that machine, but also pass along the lessons I learned feeding it, maintaining it, harvesting it, and using our trommel to screen some really nice castings for our customers. But the reality is, is with the space that we have, we couldn't produce enough castings to fulfill the orders we were getting. And my castings, which include a lot of small wood chip particles and hulls from the spent grains were significantly different in both texture and color from most of the worm castings produced by other suppliers. So I didn't feel right blending my lighter colored castings with the darker colored castings from other suppliers. I needed a single source of worm castings to make sure that my customers got the same quality product time after time. Using this supplier, I can still serve the home gardener, but also be a low cost provider for larger scale agricultural operations, golf courses, cannabis growers, vineyards, and resellers who wanna rebag the castings for their own brand. Now I've known the owners of the company since I met them at the North Carolina State Vermiculture Conference in 2019. And for those of you interested in business, this should show you the power of networking at live events like that. Anyways, we stayed in touch, and when I told them that I needed a consistent and dependable source of worm castings, they stepped up to the plate and delivered. They've been great partners for me, and they serve you, my customers, really well. It's a great example of how partnering can make a whole lot more sense than doing everything on your own. So I'm going to explain their operation, but there are a few things that I won't be able to divulge, especially when it comes to certain aspects and details about how they make their worm castings. I'm also not going to identify who this company is yet. Now that's just me being selfish and protecting my own supply, but I'll say that I've referred my established bulk customers to them directly, and that's easier for everybody. Okay, so how big is this operation? It's not the largest in the country, but to home gamers like you and me, they're enormous, producing about 1,300 tons, which is about 2,400 cubic yards of castings every year. They have the space to expand beyond that if need be. And so how do they do it? Are they using continuous flow through systems or windrows? Neither. They use what's called a batch method of vermicomposting. Using large metal bins, African night crawlers get to work on 450 pounds or so of a mixture of sedge peat, grains, and additive minerals. After a few weeks in the bin, it's time to harvest. The stack bins are removed with a forklift, placed on a machine which dumps everything onto a conveyor, which takes the castings and the worms to a trommel harvester, where the castings are separated from the worms, which are either used in other bins or sold to the general public. The castings then go up another conveyor, which drops directly into a bulk tote, which is called a super sack. Like all vermicomposting operations, it's seemingly simple yet complex at the same time. On one hand, worms eat organic matter and poop out a product that you can sell. That's the easy part. The more difficult part is managing day-to-day -day and seasonal changes in temperature and humidity. For instance, when humidity plummets in the winter, they have to boost water application to their bins, but not to the point where water leaches to the bottom or where screening becomes really difficult. In the summer, they have to run their fans to keep temperatures cool, but that can also pull moisture away from the bin, so sometimes they have to add moisture then too. They're constantly adjusting their process to changing conditions. Now, I love continuous flow, but this method of castings production has its advantages too. The process is extremely predictable and the bins they use for castings production can be stacked vertically, which maximizes available floor space. And floor space is a huge limitation for smaller operations especially. They can also create a lot of worm castings without much manual labor. Now, the downside of how these guys do it? Firstly, it's expensive to start an operation like this. The owners have spent nearly $90,000 on used equipment in the last few years, and much of it they had to weld, machine, and adapt to their own purposes. If they bought all their equipment new, it would have cost them close to $200,000. That number doesn't include the hundreds of thousands spent to buy the 19-acre farm in the first place. Secondly, it's also expensive to maintain an operation like this, mainly because their vermicomposting area is kept around 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit all year round for peak production. These guys are in the upper Midwest, so you can imagine what their heating bill will look like 
like in the winter. And lastly, they use peat as a base material. Peat is not considered the most sustainable input as it's normally mined from peat bogs, which are a non-renewable resource. In the case of this supplier though, they carefully source their peat from a peat supplier that gets his stuff from excavation sites where that peat is a byproduct. It's their way of trying to be as environmentally neutral as possible. Once they get this stuff, the peat is screened and ground down to make a really nice base material. Now this is not sphagnum peat moss like you get at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's a much crumblier soil like material. It's really, really nice stuff. Now I would love for my supplier to be vermicomposting manures or food waste or other sorts of organic waste, but I'm really happy with the quality and the pricing and consistency of these worm castings. When we sell to soil blenders, they know our worm castings are going to be the same quality and exhibit very similar micro populations to the castings they bought months prior. So I love having this worm farm as a partner. They're ethical, they're reliable, and they have an exquisite consistency of their product. Now, I still kind of pine for the days of getting our hands dirty here at the Urban Worm Company, but I think our time is better spent not doing it. Making our own worm castings was a labor of love for us. I felt like I could authentically educate smaller vermicomposters on larger scale techniques, from pre-composting to vermicomposting and to screening. But there just came a time when it was best to hand off our production to pros who could make a lot more than we could and not sacrifice quality in the process. In fact, I think their stuff is probably better than ours was. If you're in the market for worm castings, whether just a couple pounds or a 20 ton truckload, get in touch with us at urbanwormcompany.com and check out our bulk worm casting buyer's guide on our blog. You'll see that link in the video description as well. Buying a ton of castings is quite a different ex customer experience than buying just a couple pounds, and we've got some good pointers, especially for the first time buyer. But there's no other way of getting lots of worm castings delivered to your door so inexpensively. That's it, gang. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.